The curious among you may have wondered, do sequences have more than one limit? The answer is no. They are unique, if they exist, that is. Of course, this isn't going to hold if the sequence is divergent, but let's prove this theorem, this statement, that sequence limits are unique. So I'm going to just have to pick an arbitrary sequence here. So let's just, let's let a, a sub n be a sequence. And the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to assume that it has different limits. So in other words, I'm going to say the limit as n goes to infinity of a sub n is L1 for limit, my first limit. And also I'm going to assume that it has a different limit here that the limit as n goes to infinity of a sub n also happens to equal L2. And how I'm going to do this is I'm going to show that L1 and L2 are in fact the same thing. Well, what does this mean? What do these two things mean in terms of the definition of limits? What's the definition of this first piece? Well, it means that for all epsilon greater than zero, there exists some capital N, I'll call it N1 to go with limit one, such that for every little n after this capital N, the absolute value of the sequence minus the limit is less than epsilon, and I'm gonna do a very common thing in analysis, especially when you're doing things with limits and two pieces, I'm gonna make this less than epsilon over two. Since I can make epsilon basically as small as I want, well, I can always just cut it in half as well. This is a subtlety to this. Let's write the exact same thing, that for all epsilon greater than zero, pretty much the same statement, there exists some n2, for the second piece, such that for all little n after n2, the absolute value of our sequence minus its second limit, I'll do the same thing, is less than epsilon over two. So these two statements I wrote are exactly the definition of my assumptions here, that the limit equals L1 and the limit equals L2. Now here's the thing, we want these both to be happening in our proof. Again, a common thing in these analysis proofs, when you have two different capital N's, I'm gonna take just capital N to be the maximum, the larger of N1 and N2. Why am I doing this? This first statement is true for all little n after n1. The second statement is true for all little n after n2. I want them to be both true at the same time, so I need to make sure I'm only considering all little n after both of them. So we do this thing, we take capital N to be the maximum, then we have both of these statements true at the same time for all little n after capital N. Here's how we're gonna show that these two limits are equal. They're gonna be equal, or we're gonna consider them equal if their difference in absolute value is less than epsilon. Very similar to how we say sequence convergence. It's a really similar idea. If the difference between the limits in absolute value is less than epsilon, well, they're arbitrarily close, they're the same thing. And Another extremely common trick, if you're gonna take analysis, you'll wanna get a hold of this trick, it's adding by zero. How can I kind of create what we already know? We already know these two things hold true, and I want to show this, I want to show L1 minus L2 at the end of the day is less than epsilon. We have to use these facts, we add by zero. So I have L1, and I'm gonna subtract a sub n, but I can't just subtract a sub n, I have to also add it to keep it balanced. This is my addition by zero. Why do this? Well, now I can just go ahead and use the triangle inequality, grouping things like this. So this, via the triangle inequality, is less than or equal to absolute value of the first one, plus absolute value of the second one. And you might be a little concerned that these are flipped via what we have before, but you could factor out a negative and the absolute value of a negative is simply the same thing. So it's really equivalent 
to writing it the way we have above. And what's nice about this now we have this first piece is less than epsilon over 2 plus the second piece is also less than epsilon over 2. Epsilon over 2 plus epsilon over 2 is epsilon. And so what we have is that the absolute value of the difference of the limits is less than epsilon. In other words, those two limits are the same and sequence limits are unique. If you enjoyed this video and you want to see more real analysis, click the link on the screen to watch the next video in the real analysis course.